everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very secret special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your hidden identity? Let me just tell you, Jackie, it's time to finish the fight. That's a very epic intro. I don't even think you need to say the character's name at that point. <laughs> well, some I, I, I've been called Master Chief from time to time, and... My mother calls me Master Chef from time to time, but uh, I'll let you decide which one that should be. If you've had my cooking, I believe you'll call me Master Chief. <laughs> so are you are you an army man and Chef Ramsay? Yeah, well, no. I, uh, I, I, uh, no. Uh, uh, as my wife will tell you, my, my expertise in the kitchen is, is not to be exposed to, to anybody else. It's, it's never a good idea. Uh, so yeah, no, I, 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 I go into the kitchen only to eat and occasionally to clean up. If I, if I want to eat again, I got to clean up. Sounds like you'll be eating a lot of ramen. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> but for the listeners out there, we're very happy to have you on. They've been clamoring to be like, we want them. We want them so bad. <laughs> so th this is kind of an interesting thing for me as well, because I'm not a big shooter person player myself, uh -huh. but one of the first games me and my brother really played together on like a bonding experience, we have a, like 11 year difference, is Halo. So this is like full circle for me. This is really weird. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, I run into that kind of thing a lot, right? you know, in families and especially uh, uh, brothers and sisters is that, 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 you know, Halo sometimes is the unifying force, um, which is, you know, that's kind of cool. Well, you know, for people who, you know, just don't want to focus on Halo, obviously that's that's the big thing attached to your name, but you kind of just don't start as this big, tough army dude in a video game. So how initially did you get interested in voiceover? Well, my, my primary background, Jackie, is, is radio. I host, uh, like yourself, I host a, uh, a radio show here in Chicago, where I'm at at the moment, um, called on a station called The Drive. 97.1 FM, and it, it's really what I've done all my life. I mean, it's uh, when I was in college, I was uh, I hosted the radio show in college, and I've been doing it in in one location or another uh, ever since. Uh, I really didn't start doing voiceover till about um, maybe 15 years ago when I was out in LA. Uh, I started doing voiceover out there, um, thinking that it was. Uh, that it was a natural sort of progression to go from radio to doing voiceover, although I came to find out that it's not, actually. And in many cases, uh, the the radio has actually been a hindrance to, to doing voiceover because, um, you know, unless, unless the job happens to be, you know, they want you to pretend like you're a disc jockey, it, 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 you know, it, it, it tends to get in the way. So it involved what was exciting for me was that it, it, it sort of allowed me to sort of go back into into training, if you will, to, um, y you know, use your voice in different ways and not just being on the air. I mean, it's, you know, there there is a particular style uh, when you're uh, on the air as a radio person, uh, and that style I do five hours a day, five days a week. But to do other styles, you need to leave that behind and, and develop something else you know, with your voice. So it actually, um, it, it, it sort of developed a new in interest for me. And, and most of the work that I did uh, and still do is commercial silver and with the occasional uh, narration, you know, documentaries and that kind of thing. And uh, it wasn't until uh, uh, really just before Halo 1 that I, that I had any opportunity or any exposure to start doing uh, video gaming. Well, I will say it's interesting for me to hear that, you know, the radio has sort of been a hindrance to voiceover because we have talked to people in the past who have, you know, gone from radio DJing and then transitioned full time into voiceover. Right. But we haven't had many people who, who do both. So I can right. understand why that yeah. would that would conflict with each other. <laughs> well, and that's exactly the point. And yes, and I know a lot of people uh, who have tr who transitioned. I just never I just never left radio because. Uh, I was having too much fun at it, uh, and and it was um, it was good to me, <laughs> shall we say, and still is. 
and I never really wanted to to get all the way away from it. But I think the price you pay for doing that is that then you never really fully uh, immerse yourself into into voiceover. And you're right, you kind of have to do. There's very few uh, current full time on air radio people who are also uh, successful voiceover people. Well, I have to say I can't compare to my own experiences because I'm not a voiceover actor in any sense. But I will say that there's something appealing about radio with how you know off the cuff you can be sometimes. Yes, yes, and and I like yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that and that's what uh, appeals to me. I mean, every day is a new day, every show is a new show, and uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting that way. What I like about a commercial voiceover is is that every job. Um, is a new job, you know what I mean? And every, you, you have to approach uh, each job, uh, you know, as a new character and sort of be able to tap into, um, you know, different personalities. Uh, it, it's not as it's not as as you say random or off the cuff as a as a you know regular radio show is, but you also you you have to be able to draw from different things different characters in order to find the right one that fits that particular, you know, spot or narration or, 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 you know, in the case of Halo, you know, to find who that character is in terms of Master Chief to be able to apply that to make it work with the rest of the character. So there is that challenge that becomes unique with every, every uh, situation that you're presented with. Well, now, how did the opportunity to voice in Halo come about? Because obviously, it's a little bit different than commercial work. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Um, I did uh, a job for um, a guy by the name of Marty O'Donnell, who uh, was based here in Chicago. They had a little company called Bungie, and they were doing gaming. And they had a game um, that was a PC game called Septera Core, and he was casting voices for it. And, and Marty used to hear me on the radio, and it's one of those rare cases where somebody actually heard me on the radio and say, wow, you know what, he might be good <laughs> doing this voiceover, because that never happens. Um, uh, but, but he did, and he uh, you know, called me up and said, you know, would you come in and read for this part? And it was a very minor part in a very minor game. Um, so I did, and it was fun. It was unique, something different, and and that was the end of it. Uh, about a year later, he called again with the opportunity to do another game, and he says, I think you would be right to to read for this this character we're uh, on this game we're doing called Halo. So I came in, and um, you know, we talked about. Uh, who Master Chief was, and, and at that point, I, I, he didn't even have a, a, a drawing for me to look at. There was nothing visual for me to see, um, but so he, he just sort of described the character as this, uh, you know, sort of stoic, uh, you know, man of few words, a military guy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. He it said he, he doesn't speak much, but when he does, it's usually something very important and that kind of thing, and he said... Uh, that he he had in his mind like a Clint Eastwood type of character from when Clint did the uh, you know the for a few dollars more and all the spaghetti westerns and 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 the dirty hairy stuff. He said that he, that's who I'm kind of thinking of with this guy. Um, so I took that image and kind of ran with it, and we did we did Halo One, and uh, that was what 2001, and. Um, and again, that was the end of it. And and I was not into gaming at that time. I didn't play video games, so I, I had no real connection with that world. And it was probably a good year later that I happened to be with a friend down in um, in Florida, and his kids were playing the game one day. And I wa I was walking through the family room, and they say, "Hey, you know," I said, "I think I I." Uh, a voice to character on, on on that game, and these kids up until that point were completely unimpressed with the fact that I was on radio in Chicago. <laughs> well, that figures. <laughs> they were not impressed that, you know, as their dad told them that occasionally they might hear my voice on a radio or on a TV commercial on TV. Totally unimpressed. Uh, I said, I think I'm on a voice to character on that, and they stopped what they were doing and they said, "Who was it?" And I literally could not remember the name of the character. It had, I was completely out of touch with it. I said, I, I can't remember, but I said, I think he was the main guy. And they said, Master Chief? I said, yeah, yeah, it was Master Chief. Well, 
within 15 minutes, there was literally a line outside this guy's front door of every per every kid in the neighborhood, every gamer within a, you know, a two or three mile radius brought who was carrying either their Xbox or a copy of the game or whatever and wanted me to sign it. And this was compl a complete shock to me. And I had no idea that the game had was this big. I, I it was com I was completely bowled over by it. And you know, I went down to the GameStop, the local GameStop, and walked in, and there was a big, large cardboard cutout of Master Chief and people buying the game like it was going out of style. And I then realized that I had somehow hitched my wagon to something that was very, very big. That is, I think, one of the most unique stories I've heard for people finding out how much, you know, uh, how much love there is for a video game or franchise. Because you might hear it, you know, from your voice director or whatever, and they're like, yeah, this, this did really well. Or you might, like, search it up on the internet or something. But when you see it, it's, it seems like a totally different experience. It's totally blindsided. And mainly because uh, in video games... Uh, as you know, this is kind of a mercenary way to look at it, but but we don't get residuals on on video games. When you when you do a commercial, uh, the way you know whether the, it was a success or not is in direct correlation with how many checks you may be getting in your mailbox. Because if it's a very successful commercial and it's running a lot, well, you get paid you know every time it runs. So so you you know you'll be getting a check every six weeks or so and you go wow this is great in addition to probably you know maybe seeing it on television or hearing it on the radio uh with video games unless you're in the world you have no idea because there are no residuals you get paid once to do it and then that's that's the end of it um so i had and because you know my my kids at that time were, were grown and and plus i had two girls who were completely uninterested <laughs> in video gaming uh and even if they were they were long past the age to be getting into it and and so i had no connection to it whatsoever uh until uh until i was at this friend's house and his kids were playing the game and that's and that that was my first introduction to it well to be fair gaming has changed so much in the past you know 10 years you have all these events some of them are red carpet and it seems like only just lately they're really getting the voice actors involved to be like come down we know you're important to the game come on and they didn't really have that before <laughs> No, well, I mean, it, in, in the very beginning, and I, I think it's one of the things that separates uh, uh, Halo. It's it's one of several things that I think, you know, brought Halo out out to the forefront. Was you know, it used to be in the in the very early days of video gaming, they didn't care who voiced the characters. I mean, they'd get you know, often the developers would do it themselves. Or they'd get, you know, the, you know, whoever, you know, their their friends or whoever happened to be hanging around, it, because it wasn't important. Um, with the advent of Halo and games like that, where the action, you know, the the storyline became important. It wasn't just the action. It wasn't just the shooter, and the and the, you know, and blowing stuff up. It was it, they were actually developing a, a real storyline, uh, and with that character development and with character development you wanted a voiceover you know voice person who would you know could be directed and could match the character and give that character whatever weight it needed and so you know the first indication of that was when games started to uh, employ professional voiceover people to do games and then the next step after that was um, you know involving celebrities in 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 gaming which of course now is commonplace well, I will say it seems like the fan base just really loves to follow their favorite voice actor. I don't know how much you've experienced this yourself, but we see it on the show all the time where people will literally buy something just based on what voice artist is in it, which I think is an amazing achievement considering, you know, it's only been five, ten years before people were like, what? Voice actor? I don't know what they do. They do little cartoon kitty voices, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're right, Jack. It is... Uh... I mean, it, you know, I'm I'm thrilled that that's the case. But uh, and I, you know, and as a result of that, I've been to you know many conventions and stuff like that, and met a lot of fans and everything. And uh, yeah, it is it's it's important to them. Um, and therefore, as a voice actor, it needs to be important to us, uh, so that it becomes. And certainly, that's been the case with me with Halo. Uh, it becomes more than a job because you realize that. 
you know, people have a lot invested in in the character or, or in the game that they're enjoying. Uh, in, you know, above and beyond just the cool stuff that you see, you know, that that it may do on screen, they they get involved in the story as well. And 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 Halo and and Bungie in the beginning and now three four three uh, has has you know been very serious about you know maintaining that storyline. And then you see all the offshoots in the case of Halo. Um, you know, books and comic books and, and you know, even, even you know, uh, videos and that kind of stuff, all based off of not the shooter aspect of the game, but the story of the game. And, uh, and of course, that's where I came in, and it, and it went in the pocket for me because I love science fiction, and, and it was, you know, this was, it ended up me being, you know, a little dream come true. Well, doesn't it ever, you know, take you back to realize there's, what, six, seven iterations almost of, of Halo as well as you know the like anime movies and the books and everything else yes it does it's it's uh you know I've been involved you know in the, obviously the first three and then in, in a lesser degree in Halo Reach and uh, and now Halo 4 uh and to be able to be connected to this thing uh and watch it grow exponentially over the years um I mean we went Last was it was a year ago August out to Seattle uh, for Halo Fest, which was a, which was the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the first game, and you know and it, it was a very it was a lot of fun because you had there were Bungie people there, there were 343 Microsoft people there. Um, it was the first time I met Jen Taylor, the voice of Cortana, and and it was it was a culmination of what the first 10 years had been and we got to do it you know with the fans who were lucky enough to be there and uh, uh wow it, it was just a blast and it was yeah it was it, it was uh it, yeah it was a culmination of all of that well now for the gamers out there and be honest with us because we know that not all actors get a chance to play the games very often but how bad do you suck at the game <laughs> no idea jackie <laughs> <laughs> I have two stipulations uh, when I make an appearance uh, at, a, at, a, at a con or, or, you know, a store opening or whatever it might be uh, as the voice of Master Chief. And they are, number one, I won't play the game. And number two, I won't dress up as the character. Uh, and the reason why I won't play the game is because it is a huge disappointment. <laughs> they, uh, I went to one um, con up in Toronto, and I'm trying to think struggle to remember the name of it now but it's a big con every every year uh, up in toronto and um and i told the guy i told the promoter i said i, I won't i don't play the game and i don't and i don't dress up as a character he says fine 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 so i walk anyway the second day of the convention I'm, i walk into the big hall and there's literally thousands of people there and there's a kid uh up sort of elevated on an elevated stage playing the game and they tell me this kid is like the world champion 11 year old halo gamer nobody can beat him and so that's interesting and so you know next thing i know they had somehow you know got me up there and said okay you're gonna play him i said what? i you know what i say i don't play no, no okay and here's steve downs the voice of master chief is gonna play you know this the, you know freddie who you know whatever his name was and i sat down there and it, it didn't last 10 seconds i mean it was just it was embarrassing for everybody and you know you haven't felt embarrassment until you ha have a ten-year-old kid look at you in that way that like says, "Really, <laughs> that's all you got?" So I, I think that answers your question. Is that I? <laughs> I'm cringing while you're telling the story too. I can just imagine it. <laughs> and my, it was Halo Two when Halo Two came out. Uh, my stepson played, and so I thought, you know, I, I should really learn, you know, how to how to do this. And, you know, it was just, it was just pointless. He would just kill me like every day. <laughs> so after a while, you know, you start to lose credibility with your stepson when he just mops the floor with you with this video game. So I thought, you know what, maybe the, the gaming side of this isn't for me. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't have the hand-eye coordination to, to or, or, or the time to invest in it. But I do what, what I love. Uh, is the story side of it, and I and that I do love, and I've read the books, and I've you know tried to be you know keep up with with all the all the you know as much as I can, as much as time will allow, 
on on the story of it. And that's the part that fascinates me and gets me involved. And so my feeling is when I run into people is like, you know, the shooter part of it is your job. Uh, the the you know helping to advance the story part of it is my job. And together, hopefully, we you know we end up with a good experience for everybody. Well, if it makes you feel better, I used to be really awesome in in early high school, and now when I pick up a shooting game, like if you're just not on top of it and you're not you know into the competitive like atmosphere, you just yep. suck. <laughs> like you just you just completely lose all the skills you've developed. <laughs> you you got to keep up that muscle memory or something, but uh, yeah, and I just uh, it it was just beyond me. <laughs> so I don't make any bones about it, and because I knew early on that gamers are not people that you want to try to fool and uh so i never i never sort of purported that i could play because they would find out in short order that that was not the case smart man <laughs> but now i know you can't say much uh due to the fact that ndas are very restrictive and we know that there are snipers outside your window but i'm, I'm assuming you can give an opinion on how you think fans will react to the latest iteration well i um yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. I, I always go back to like when you, when there's a movie coming out and you've been really anticipating it, um, you know, because you maybe you're familiar with the story or you love the actor was in or whatever, but you're really anticipating this movie, and uh, you know the movie comes out and you don't see it right away and you start to read all the reviews and everybody's telling you about it, so that by the time you go see it, it, it it's, it's, it's almost uh, anticlimactic. So with with that, I don't like to build everybody's hopes up too much, but I can tell you from what I have seen, and I've seen a lot more of this game during production than I ever saw of of any other Halo game that I ever was involved in. So that, you know, 343 really brought both Jen and I in on a level that, that we had not been brought in on before. And uh, it is awesome. It is just, in every way you can imagine, awesome. And I don't think that I'm overstating that. And I think if you're a lover of, of the franchise, um, you will not be disappointed by any matter. matter. Excuse me. <coughs> I think also for people who, for whatever reason, are just getting into it, I think they will, you know, uh, they decide to keep so you don't have to be a devotee from day one of Halo 1 to be able to come in now with Halo 4 and enjoy the game. So, and that's, that's a pretty hard line to walk to be able to, you know, satisfy the hardcore fans and yet not be um, uh, sort of exclusive to, to new people, you know, who, who have been hearing about this Halo thing for the last however many years, but never really got into it. Or maybe they were young game came out and they were too young to be involved now be involved um i they they've somehow been able to 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 structure it so that both groups will be welcome in this and the and the and the uh and we've seen some, um you, you know they've let out some of the visuals on this and some of the things they're doing with the weaponry and stuff like that and it's just i i, I just don't think anybody's disappointed i think 343 has taken the ball uh from from Bungie and run with it and has made something that's going to be truly truly special. Well, it seems like everybody's kind of having fun with it too. I mean, I, this is a, a little bit of a sidetrack. I don't know if you saw it yourself, but I think at one point, like Conan O'Brien is voicing like a secret character or something. And I, I just love that they're putting you know funny jokes like that into the Halo series because one moment I remember from the first one so bad is when at the very end there's an alien that touches some guy's butt at the very end. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm glad that they're keeping up with that spirit of, like, satire. Yeah, I'm not taking yourself too seriously and, and, and injecting some humor in it. And, yeah, Conan does have a, uh, a part in it that, that uh, is, is uh, you know, is, is funny without, without breaking the mood of the game. In fact... If you didn't know it was Conan, you 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 it might it might go right by you, but but uh, uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's kind of cool. Well, I know that the listeners are looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to it because I've only seen uh, people play three. I haven't gotten a chance to play it myself, but uh, this is one that I'm pretty excited to 
see the whole experience because it just looks amazing. And there's uh, uh, to me the most exciting part of it personally for me is where is what I always hoped would happen with with the development of the story is that um, Master Chief, uh, you know, you know, first of all, he has more lines just to have. So you know, I actually get to speak in maybe I might even say two or three sentences. Well, you know, <laughs> don't get crazy. But it might happen, um, and and the the story uh, development between Master Chief and Cortana, uh, you know that it, it is going is going places. I mean, I can't I can't get real specific about it, but it is, um, you know, it's it, it's the first time Jen and I got to work together, and 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 the reason they wanted to do that was because they you know there's there's you know some emotional stuff going on there between the two characters and it really helps you know to be able to work on it uh you know in the same room at the same time in, in a you know lot if you will and um uh he, you know the storyline where they're taking this thing uh is is uh, you get to learn a, a lot more about who master chief is beyond just this big tough marine who you know kills a lot of people <laughs> there's a little more this time around that i think people are going to hopefully um enjoy and appreciate i i, I certainly did yeah, that's for sure i love it when they put you know more than one voice actor in a room because you can kind of just feel the chemistry oozing off the character <laughs> yes, and, I, and i hope that's apparent you know jen and i you know she lives in seattle and i live in chicago and and we had never done it before and, and maybe there wasn't a real reason to do it before but but this time uh, there was a good reason to do it, and it, and it involved, uh, you know, a lot more sessions and a lot more work. But it was, I, I think, it was it was certainly worth it for uh, for me, and I think Jen enjoyed it too. And and uh, uh, it 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 gave us a chance to, uh, you know, explore these characters and 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 bring out a, a more personality that, than we had gotten to do in the past. Well, now for the listeners out there who want to keep up to date on what you're doing, do you have any other projects that you want to promote? Anything you want them to look out for? I'm not well. If you're in Chicago, I sure want you to be listening to the drive. And even if you're not in Chicago, you can get us online on our online stream at uh, uh, 97.1 FM the drive dot com or something like that. And um, I do a uh, a syndicated radio show that airs once a week, and it may air in your town. It's called uh, The Classics, which is a two-hour sort of uh, look at classic rock with a lot of music and interviews, and uh, that, that airs all over the country and in uh, New Zealand and Australia and Ireland. And uh, that's an ongoing project. As far as I'm not, as far as gaming is concerned, uh, I'm, I'm not doing anything new at the at this moment. I did get to do a small role in the cartoon version of the Avengers, which was a lot of fun. That aired this year. Uh, I, I played a character called Star Lord, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I don't know if that's. In fact, I'm not even sure that the series is coming back again next year. But but if it does. Uh, hopefully, Star Lord will make his appearance once again. Um, so, you know, and just you know, beyond that, the usual commercial stuff, and uh, and um, and that that's kind of it. Well, for the listeners that want to stalk you in a nice way, do you do the social media thing? Do you have a website? Anything like that? I do have a website, uh, which is uh, stevedownsvo.com, and uh, I'm also on Facebook. Uh, you just you put in Steve Downs, and and the fan page will come up. Uh, the, 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 the personal page is, is filled up, but, the, but there's always room on the fan page. So, uh, yeah, just go on Facebook and hit Steve Downs and you'll see it. And I try to keep people, uh, up to date on what's going on. And I, and I, I, you know, Jackie, I even tweet from time to time. I'm yes. Keep- Drag kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> well, Twitter, Twitter is a nice way to get lost in your thoughts. So. Well, it's a nice way to get lost, period. But whether it's in your thoughts or somebody else's thoughts, but uh, yeah, so I try to keep up, you know, and, and just especially in advance of the release of the game, uh, you know, if there's anything that ever comes my way that, that I can, you know, share out there uh, in terms of people getting ready for the game, I try to make that available. So, uh, and I try to respond to people as much as I can on, on both the face on Facebook and Twitter. So um, I, I can't always guarantee it, but I do try to, to, you know, answer any questions that I can or, or, or 
you know, pass along any information that I can. Well, for the brave souls out there that want to stalk you from the bushes, are there any events that you have coming up this year or next year? Any conventions or anything? Uh, the only thing right now is and uh, is perhaps a, an appearance in New York uh, on the night of the release of the game, which is November 6th. Uh, so midnight, November 5th slash November 6th. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I can't say for sure, but um, I think I'm going to be at a game stand somewhere in New York City that night. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, there's there's several things um, uh, convention-wise that are uh, you know sort of tentative right now that that I can't really uh, uh, speak to yet because they haven't been finalized. But I rest assured, I intend to be sort of out and about next year uh, with Halo Four. That's for sure. Well, make sure to let us know that way we can make the listeners know because we know how much they love to interact with you face to face. You know, it's it's not just over the internet. You know, with the random like keystrokes, like do 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 do. It's actually you know some interaction. Yeah, that would be yeah. Well, I you know Jackie, that's a great idea, and, and you know hopefully uh, you know hopefully I'll be out in the in the Vegas uh, here in the in the near future. So, well, but uh, yeah, that's a great idea. I will keep you. I'll keep you uh, posted on that. And since we're nearing the end of this interview, we have a little tradition here on 91.8 The Fan. So I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate. Certainly. Awesome. Now, we were a little bit worried that you wouldn't be able to do this because, uh, well, you already work at a radio station. But uh, we ask everyone, whether they're a voice actor or not, if they'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Of course. Awesome. The trick of it, however, is that we do the takes live on air. But we basically ask if you could say, hello, my name is, you insert your name. I do this. You can say you're a DJ. You can say you're the voice of Master Chief. Whatever you want to put there. Okay. And you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. 91.8 The Fan. So whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. You ready? Yep. Right. Spartans, this is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief. And you're tuned in to 91.8. Wait a minute, it's ninety eight point one, right? It's ninety one point eight. You had it you had it right the first time. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. All right. Spartans, listen up. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, and you're tuned in to ninety one point eight, the fan. Now finish the fight. That was perfect. That gave me chills. <laughs> That's my job, Jackie. <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Uh, just uh, uh, a sincere thanks uh, for all the support. Uh, I got. I mean, they. They. I really am humbled by. Uh, you know, whenever I do get a chance to meet fans, and I can tell you this for sure that the fans had a major role in uh, Jen and I uh, both coming back to uh, reprise our. Uh, the our voices, <coughs> excuse me, our voices as characters for Master Chief and Cortana. It was uh, really fan driven, and we are very, very appreciative of that. Um, so, uh, just a big thank you, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy Halo Four playing it as much as we did uh, working on it because it was a blast. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, shame on you, but don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days, so keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.